And the first thing that we're going to talk about is aligning objects in InDesign. And to align objects in InDesign, you need to first go to your Align panel. So come up here to your window on your menu bar and click on that to get your submenus. And then you're going to go and look for the Align panel. Now as you come down here, you're also not going to see an Align panel, and that's because it's hiding under Object and Layout. And when you go over Object and Layout and you come here to Align, click on that, and now you have your Align panel. The first thing that you need to do is you need to have some objects selected. So let's go in and select with um, our selection tool, like so. Now we have more than one object selected. And now we can come back over to our Align objects and we can align those objects that we have selected according to these little buttons right here. They give you different options on how you can align these objects together. And the first one that we have here is align the left edges. And when we click on this, you will see that this took the left edges of every one of those objects and just made sure that they all matched. And next to that, you have the option to do it horizontally. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now you see that all of your objects have been aligned according to their horizontal center. Next, you have the ability to align the objects according to their right edges. And as you might guess, pretty much the same. It just does it on the right. Now over here, you have the ability to align according to your top, your bottom, or your center vertical of your object. And this is just another way that you can align your objects. And now we're going to talk about distributing our objects. First we had our align objects, and then below it in the align panel we have distribute objects. And when you distribute objects in InDesign, what you're doing is you're telling InDesign to take whatever objects you have selected, and you want to distribute them evenly while aligning them to a specific point. And to show you what I mean by that, let's go ahead and select these four objects right there. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to come down to Distribute Objects, and then we have our little buttons here, just like we did on the Align, and they do basically the same thing, except for they're distributing instead of aligning. And below that, you have a couple of options. You can use Specific Spacing, and then next I have this Align To button. And when you click on this, this is where you tell InDesign what you're going to align to. So for this exercise, let's go ahead and say Align To Page. And then let's use one of our buttons here by distributing the top edges. Now, when we did that, you got a completely different result than when you aligned the objects to each other. Now, if you don't like the way that looks and you want to do something else with it, you can change how the objects are aligned. But sometimes you need a more accurate tool for aligning and distributing your objects in InDesign. And for that, you can use the Gap tool. And if you come to the fourth tool down on the toolbar, you will see the Gap tool. And that's going to be a U as a shortcut. And when you click on that, and when you come on the page, the first thing you'll notice is right here, you see the icon reappear. And the icon shows you that it's measuring a gap. And the gray area with the arrow underneath it shows the gap that it's measuring. And currently it's measuring the gap between the edge of the page on the left side and this blue square object. And if you go and you hold down your mouse button and you pull either direction, you'll see that you're now moving that blue box around, making it bigger or smaller. And in the middle next to the icon, it's giving you some uh, dimensions to tell you how big the width of that gap is. So that's something that you might find interesting if you need to have a specific size gap between your page and your margin. And where the gap tool gets more helpful is when you come over here between two objects like so, or you could come down here between these two objects. And when you click and drag here, you will see that the gap is basically staying the same height, but it's changing where the gap is in relation to those objects. So it's keeping the same size gap, but it's just moving those objects around by resizing them so that you can change your layout that way. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the concept of stacking order. And as you can see with all of these objects that I have here, I have some objects that are overlapping others. Right here I have a picture that's overlapping this blue box and when I grab that blue box or blue rectangle and pull it around you can see that 
There's a full rectangle there. It's just currently being partially covered over. And right here I have a pink rectangle that's partially covering over that picture right there. And I have a picture that's underneath another picture. Well, what decides what picture is above another picture is the stacking order. And the stacking order just says that this picture is below that picture and it's below this pink box. So you just kind of think of all of these pictures as basically being stacked one on top of another um, based on the stacking order. And you can change the stacking order if, for example, you want this pink box to be underneath that butterfly picture and maybe underneath this blue box as well. You can do so by just changing the stacking order. And how you do that is you go up to Object on your menu bar. And you click on that and you come down to Arrange and go to your Fly Out menu. And here you have the ability to bring that pink box all the way to the front, which currently it's already at the front that's why it's on top of everything you can bring it forward which just means bringing it up another level and once again it's already on top so we're not going to want to do that you can send it backwards which that might send it back a layer so that it gets behind that uh, butterfly picture but we're not really sure how far forward or how far back in the stacking order that butterfly picture so for our purposes, it's probably best to go ahead and send it all the way to the back. So go ahead and click on send to back. And now you can see that that pink box is not only behind the butterfly picture, but it's also now behind the blue box. Well, let's say that we're kind of happy with that, but now we want the blue box to be behind it. Let's go ahead and select our blue box. Now do the same thing, go up to object and arrange, and then go to send to back. And now you have your pink box above the blue box but still behind your butterfly picture. Now another way that you can work with your uh, stacking order in InDesign is through the use of layers. Now by default InDesign only creates one layer for your document and for most people a single layer on their document will be perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and come over to our panel bin and right below pages you will find your layers panel. And over here we you can see that we have one single layer and it's currently called layer one. Now, if you want to change the name of this you just click on it and right now it says layer one but it's highlighted so I can call that base layer and there are some options here you could show the layer you could if you want to have a layer that you use as a guide that you don't actually show you can get rid of that layer and just make it invisible if you go OK now you can see that now everything on there is completely invisible but if you come over here and you toggle your visibility to the left of the name of your layer and click on that, it's now visible again. So you can change the visibility kind of at will. And the other thing that you can do is by clicking on this flyout menu, you will see that you have a list of all of your objects that are currently in your layer, which is everything on the page right now. And it's a little hard to manage because as you can tell, all of the rectangles that you have, they're just called rectangle. So until you name the layers, it's going to be a little bit confusing. Like here you have rectangle and you can rename it, but until you toggle the visibility, you're not gonna know which rectangle it is. So now you can go small yellow rectangle. so that you know what you're messing with. And go down and name each of these objects individually so that you know what particular object you're working with. Now the real reason why working with layers and the layers panel is great is because when you have this open and you're seeing all of these objects right here, this is showing you your stacking order. So when you have this small yellow rectangle, as you can see, it's at the top of the list. It's on top of everything. but what you can do in the layers panel is you can actually hover the hand over that and then click and now you see the hands closed and you have that kind of gray bar at the top you can come down and drag this to the bottom like so and now you can see kind of that it's behind that blue and when you move that it is now in the back and if you don't like that you can easily just grab it again and move it to the top of your stack without messing with going to 
your object and then coming down to arrange and doing your send to front, send to back. The other thing that's great in the layers panel is that you can close that up and come down here to create new layer and click on that. And then we can go and we can move all of our images from layer one, the base layer, up to the picture layer. Now let's go ahead and open that up and you can't see anything in that right now but that's fine and come down here and grab a picture and pull that picture up so that the gray line is between layer two and base and then let go and now as you see when you collapse that it disappears and when you open it it will show you that butterfly two is in layer two and then you can go and grab another picture and do the same thing and one more picture and pull it up and now you have the same thing so now you have all three of those pictures on layer two and if you don't want to see any of them you can just toggle off the visibility for the entire layer so that's an interesting way to kind of organize your pictures directly through the layer panel and it kind of bypasses having to manually stack everything using your object bring to front and bring to back command. If you want to see your options for a layer just go ahead and double click on the name and then remember down here in the bottom of the uh, dialog box you have options for whether you want to show that layer, if you want to lock a layer so that changes can't be made to it inadvertently you can lock your layer by checking that checkbox, you can suppress text wrap when the layer is hidden if you want to. You can uh, tell InDesign whether you want this layer to be printable or not. If you have instructions for your printer and you want to lay it out in InDesign but you don't want that to print as part of the document, just take that checkbox off and you won't print that layer as part of the document. You also have the ability to show guides or not and you can lock your guides. All of these options are available in your layer options and you get to them just by double clicking on the name in the layers panel. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how to create anchored objects and use anchored objects in InDesign. And anchored objects are basically objects that are anchored to a text box or a text frame and when the text gets moved around that object gets moved around with it. And let's show you an example. And now that we have that pasted in we're going to come over and we're going to select our object and you can see that you have this anchor icon that's showing you that this object is going to be anchored to your text but we haven't set any options for it yet so let's go up to object and come down to anchored object and here we have options and our options for the anchored text is you can position it in line or above line or you can do a custom and then you can actually decide how much offset you want. And to see what this looks like, go ahead and hit preview. And as you can see, as you offset it, it's just going higher. But if you come down, then you're actually bringing it so that you can center it. But however you align this, this is how it's always going to look. Now, if you hit OK and you move your text around, that object is going to stay firmly planted with that text always at that spacing because it's an anchored object. A couple other things to talk about in this lesson when you have an object selected you can come down to your corners and you'll notice that your arrows now turn into two arrows with kind of a curve between them. Well that's telling you that you can rotate the object so just click and drag it to rotate it. Don't like it, control Z out of it. You can also do that with a picture, same way. Another thing that you can do is you can actually share it, and you can share it from your control panel right here. Go to your drop down and decide how much shear you want on your photo. Or if you want none, go back to zero. And you can do that with any object, just select your shear from here. Another thing, if you select an object and you go up to edit and you go copy or you do control C and the next thing you have to do is hit control V and that will paste in a copy of it. Now if you come up to your edit menu 
you can also hit paste in the edit menu to paste a copy of your object. Selecting your object and coming to your corner again. At this far out, you have these arrows, which is your rotate arrows, but if you come in closer over that particular corner, this is actually telling you that you can scale your object. Just scale it by pulling in and out. And once again, you can do you have the ability to do this manually through your control panel by just changing your width and height options. Uh, some other things that you can do, you can transform your objects by going up to Object Transform. Here you have the ability to move, scale, rotate, shear, and rotate specific amounts or flip horizontal or flip vertical directly through your menu. Um, really helpful with this is if you have an image and you want that image to be flipped, come up to transform and flip it horizontal. And as you'll see, now you have your image, it's just flipped. Now you have your onion on the right instead of on the left, it just flipped the entire photograph for you, which sometimes you may want to do.